Okay, this is part two of the lectures on lenses. Specifically, we take a look at now the math. Okay, mathematically, we're concerned with the following. For a lens, we want to relate together the object distance, the image distance, and the focal length, much like we did earlier with mirrors. Okay, now what I'm about to derive here can be derived for any situation involving any lens. But the easiest portion of this derivation, or the easiest way to do this derivation, is to have an extended object that is relatively close to a double convex converging lens. This will involve a ray diagram that you haven't seen yet. I'll be drawing it out as we proceed, and I'll be using shortcuts as well as we proceed. Okay, so here is our situation. So I'm going to use a double convex converging lens, which looks like this, like so. Okay, and then let me go ahead and label then foci on either side of the lens. Each lens has two focus, and the focal length associated with each focus is the same. So let's say, for example, right over here is one focus, and then on the other side of the lens, right over here, is another focus. Okay, and then I'm going to take an object like so and place it some distance away from the lens. This distance right here is the object distance DL. Okay, the focal length itself, by the way, is this distance here. That's like so. It's also the same thing right here on this side of the lens as well. Okay, now what I have to do is take two light rays that are coming from the tip of the arrow and then refract them through the lens out the other side, and I'll be using shortcuts as I proceed. Okay, so the first light ray is a light ray that you saw earlier in the earlier portion of today's lectures, a light ray that goes from the tip of the arrow, and then I just draw it like so to the center of the lens. Now remember that this is not quite what happens. The light ray refracts through this surface and also this surface here, but remember the net effect of those two refractions. The light ray then refracts out the other side of the lens through the focus, that is like so. Okay, and then for a second light ray, I actually have a couple of choices. For this derivation specifically, however, we choose the following light ray. First of all, let me pantomime it for you. We go from the tip of the arrow, like so, down to the center of the lens. And then it bends a little bit towards the blue line, like so, as it refracts. And then ultimately it then refracts out the other side of the lens and then does this. The net effect of this, however, is to just literally draw a straight line as a shortcut through the center of the lens, which looks like this. Like so. Okay, and then right here, notice that those two light rays then converge. That's why this is sometimes referred to as a converging lens. And the image of the tip of the arrow then therefore forms here. Okay, now overall, the entire image of the arrow looks like this. Like so. so you end up with a real inverted image. You can see this image, by the way, in my demonstration video earlier in today's folder. Take a lens, for example, and hold it out at arm's length. Look at a distant object on the other side of the room. We were looking at posters, for example, in the back of the room in my demonstration. And then you see a real virtual, or real inverted image, excuse me, that forms here on the same side of the lens as you are, as you look through it in that direction. Okay, now basically what we end up with here in this diagram are two sets of similar triangles, and I'm then gonna relate those sets to each other. So here's then how I proceed. Okay, first of all, the distance that the lens is from the image like so, this distance right here is the image distance di. And now what I want to do is relate to each other the object distance, the image distance, and the focal length. I'm also going to describe the magnification. The object has a size ho, and the image has a size hi. Okay, and then, as I said, I have to label here on my diagram several points, and then come up with two sets of similar triangles. Here's then how I construct my labeling. I'm going to call this point here O, this point O prime, this point here I, this point here, oops, I prime. There we go, like so. I'm also going to call this point right here C, and I'm going to call this point right here A. So go ahead and label those points on your own diagram just as I did here. Okay, now take a look at the following triangle. I have a triangle O prime C O. O prime C O. It's a right triangle, and right here is an angle associated with it. 
And then on the other side of the lens, I now have a triangle I prime C I. So I prime C I. That's also a right triangle, and then it's kind of hard to see here on this diagram because it's getting a little bit crowded. But right here is an angle that is the same as this angle here. So I have a right triangle here and a right triangle here that are similar to each other. Let me once again put in the focal length f like so. So because those two triangles are similar to each other, they have the same ratio of sides. And then here's then how I describe that ratio. First of all, for the triangle here on the left, this distance here, HO, over this distance here, DO. Okay, and then for the other triangle, I have this distance here, HI, over this distance here, DI. Because those triangles are similar to each other, they have the same ratio of sides. Okay, and then there's another set of similar triangles here on this diagram, and they are as follows. Take a look at triangle ACF. ACF, and then right here in black, for example, is this angle. So triangle ACF. And then also take a look at triangle I prime FI. So I prime, F, I, where it also has right here that same black angle as this one here. So triangle I prime, F, I. Those two triangles are similar to each other, so then therefore they have the same ratio of sides. Now take a look at triangle A, C, F, like so. This guy right here has the following ratio of sides. This distance here, which is HO, over this distance here, which is the focal length F. That's the same thing as this distance here, HI, over this distance here. Now this distance here, you'll notice, is the difference between DI and F. This distance right here is DI minus F. That then gives us this. So HI over DI minus F, like so. So once again, one, two sets of similar triangles. They have the same ratio of sides. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and take each of these set of ratios here and write them as HI over HO. So this guy right here, let's cross multiply. HI over HO. This is equal to DI over DO. Once you do some cross multiplying. Do the same thing here. Let's get HI over HO. So when I do HI over HO is DO or DI, excuse me, minus F over F. There we go. Sorry, I lost my train of thought for a moment and to make sure I did that cross multiplication correctly. And now what we do is we set these guys equal to each other. So DI over DO, there we go, is equal to DI minus F over F. And you end up with an expression here that relates the three distances to each other, DO, DI, and F. If you algebraically rearrange this expression, however, you end up with the following equation. You end up with this expression here, once again, which is the same equation as the mirror equation from earlier. Ultimately, we're just talking about geometry when we're talking about constructing images for reflection with mirrors and now using refraction for lenses. You basically just end up with sets of similar triangles in those two situations, for lenses and for mirrors. Therefore, ultimately, you end up with the same expressions that describe both, and that's this equation here. We also have the magnification. The magnification expression is actually right here. It's 
HI, the image size, over HO, the object size. But like it is for mirrors, it's the same thing as the image distance over the object distance. Like so, and then notice the negative sign once again. There's a sign convention associated with lenses, just like there's a sign convention for mirrors. I'll illustrate how the sign convention works in our two examples. I'll do that in a few minutes as part three of today's series of lectures on lenses.